Hi and welcome to the Arcade Buffet. Today we're going to talk about rejuvenation and I have an example for you. This is a U2000 27 inch from a time crisis game that I'm repairing for an operator. This is the best that the tube will get. I've not done a cap kit on this chassis nor have I replaced the flyback. That is scheduled to be done and will happen here shortly. But for the time being I wanted to show you what the tube looked like. I had to turn all the lights out so you could actually see the screen. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. This is as good as it gets and I'm going to show you how to do a rejuvenation with a BK467. So we will test the chassis out without any work being done to it after the rejuvenation. So, stay tuned. I will set all that up and be back. All right. Going to cut in and out a few times, but here is BK467. Very handy model. One of the reasons I like it is you have the ability to see and adjust and rejuve or clean and balance each individual color so that way you do not have to keep switching functions. So one of the biggest reasons I like it but you have several dials on it and we'll go through them later or we'll go through part of them now. This is your heater voltage this is what you set where you choose the range and where you want to be this is your, how you adjust your heater voltage and I'll show you that later this is how you set your G1 voltage and I'll show you how to figure that out and then these are your cutoffs right here for each of the guns we'll get to them later along with this dial where it's off set up set color test restore and rejuvenate functions so most of these you can get used they don't make them anymore from what I understand is these are a couple different model books that I have for them this one's the 467 and 470 book this one's the 480 and the 490. Well, they roughly have all the same information in it, but some of these, like this one, has more tube numbers in it than this one does. A couple more, not too many. But there's other ways to figure out your tube number. So we'll do that now. If you look on your tube, there will be a label on it. Well, on this label, you're looking for one specific number, which is this one right here. This one particular one is A68AGD00XX. Well, what you would normally have to do is take the book and flip through it and look through the chart. Well, sometimes these charts don't have every single model tube in them, so which is understandable. They were printed many years ago. So there's another handy tool that I use, and I'm not new video wizard so you're gonna to have to rely on using this link from this video but this fella wrote this tool and is a very handy tool and what you do is you bring up his tool with the tube number here and what you do is I've already written down that tube number is you take and type in the tube number. Start with A and then go 68 and as you type it in your results start to come up. So we want A68 A G D okay as you can see we've narrowed it down to quite a few or just a couple entries. Well the next two or the next four characters are 00 XX. Well, as you can see, there's no XX here, but you can see is there's a D00X. Well, most tubes, 20, most all tubes, 25 and over, use a 6.3 heater voltage and a G1 voltage of 50 volts, and use a CR23 for the BK467 series. So we will use the A68 AGD 00 X at 6.3 at 50 volts CR23. So hold on a minute and I will be back to show you how to do some setup. 
All right, here's going to be some setup. First couple things you want to do is make sure your workstation's clear of debris and obstructions and things so you have room to work. Well, to rejuve a tube, rejuve a tube or test it, you have to do a couple things. For one, you got to remove the neck board and make sure you don't bend the pins or anything like that. And the second part is, except for the later models of the BK series, you have to make sure your tube is discharged, otherwise you will damage your equipment. So, always discharge your tube. So, now that we've done that, you can choose to remove the anode cup, it doesn't matter. But, here is the next thing. Here is the CR23 adapter. And what you got to do is, on this particular one, the guide and the tube guide, or the net guide, is, is broken. So you got to be careful when you put it on. But you put it on very carefully. Make sure all the pins line up and go where they're supposed to. And that's pretty much all you got to do for the tube setup. So hold on, let me readjust the camera. All right, here we are. This is the BK467 unit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we've already got it plugged in, and we've already got it attached to our tube. So we're going to turn it to setup. As you can see, these two dials moved a little bit. Well, what we got to do is, we have to set our heater voltage and you won't be able to see it real on the camera but set your heater voltage to 6.3 volts it is the very it's the lowest set of numbers on this gauge next we'll set our G1 voltage which again is the very lowest set of numbers on this gauge we're going to set it to 50 so now we have our G1 in our heater setup. Now the next thing it tells you to do in the manual is turn it to set cutoff. Well now we're going to set the cutoff. This involves these three knobs here. You won't be able to see it on the camera very well but on the very top row on the gauge there's a 0 through 20 on the scale and each between all the numbers are little hash marks. Well it says one division in the manual but it doesn't tell you exactly what, divi what one division is. But one division is the very first hash mark over the zero. Just past the zero. So we're going to turn this knob and you probably couldn't see it but the needle did not move and I have turned the gauge or the adjustment knob all the way up. So right now we're not too too uh, happy about that because that means the tube that gun is not doing real well. Next we're going to do the next one. Well as you can see that one moved a little bit. It moved just over one division when I turned it all the way up. So I'm going to back it off to the one division mark. Now I'm going to adjust the third one. As you can see, hopefully you can see that needle move just that little bit. That is all the way up and that is not a good thing either. So we're going to adjust it back down to it says one division. All right, the manual also tells you to let the tube warm up around 20 seconds or so, 30 seconds. So we're going to let it warm up as we do these tests. All right, I've already had this on here, so the tube should be fairly warm. So now we're going to push it over to the test. Now watch these gauges. Let's see if they move. All right, the red gun moved a very little bit, the green gun moved a little bit, and the blue move, gun moved a very little bit. So this tube is not working, or is not very good. So we're going to attempt to rejuvenate this tube. So now the next thing you need to do is turn it over to restore. All right, in the restore function, you have rejuvenate and you have clean and balance. Well, we are going to attempt a clean and balance first. Now it says to push each of the each button individually, and you should not let it fall into the red. So we're going to try and see if these needles move at all. 
All right, so it flickered a little bit, but that's what happens. Well, next we're going to do the green. All right, next we're going to do the red. All right, see it flickered a little bit. I don't know if, yeah, you know, I don't have the camera adjusted over, but a little bit of a light show happens in the net of the tube when you do that. All right, now, what we got to do to test to see what we did, we must turn it back to the test. You see how the needles moved? That is a very good sign because clean and balance is the very lowest setting you can have on a rejuvenator. And these needles have responded real well. Now, that is only a partial sign. You have to set it back to your cutoff to see what has happened. Notice that the meat needles on the red and the green have moved, but the blue have not. So now we need to readjust our cutoffs to what there's one division. And I have a little bit more adjustment on the blue now. I have a lot more adjustment on the green. And I have a lot more adjustment on the red. Right, now we'll turn it back to test and see what our results are. Hey, hey, look at that. The clean and balance seems to have saved this tube without doing any more harsh rejuvenate or restore functions to it. So, now we're going to test the tracking. See, before you couldn't test tracking because the tube was non-responsive. Now we are going to test our tracking feature to see. Now tracking, you want all the needles to be in the yellow area and at the set tracking hash mark as close as possible together. So we are going to try a tracking test. Needles will drop as you turn it up. See how they're all nice and moving nice and steadily. And set the best gun up to the tracking mark and the others follow pretty well. So we are not going to mess with this tube anymore. So now what I will do is I will cut away and come back and I will have the tube, the chassis, connected back to the tube. I'm going to perform the color adjustments and everything before I start the video again because all that is another video segment I want to do. But for now the tube is looking so much better than it did in the very beginning of the video. And hopefully I won't have to have the lights off so you can actually see the colors and what the difference it has made. Now mind you, I still have not capped the chassis and I have not put a new flyback on it. I need to do so because when I was adjusting the flyback, the high voltage was leaking out of it and shocking me. So, it needs a new flyback. So, stay tuned, I will be back. All right. We're back. This is adjusted the best it will adjust to this tube after the rejuvenation. And I have two out of three lights on to so you can see don't see too much glare on the screen. But as you can see, the colors now are nice and vibrant and they are all there. So I still have to cap the chassis and put a new flyback on it. But as you can see, this tube lives to see a little more use. So that's what you can accomplish with a rejuvenator. It is not a tool for everybody, and it is not a tool for everybody to have to own. If you only own a couple arcades, it's not worth having this tool. It is worth sending out an email or find a local collector that does have one, or you may even be able to try a local TV shop. They may still have one on hand. Whether they know how to use it or not remains to be unknown. But this has just been a brief tutorial on the usage of a rejuvenator to help prolong and fix the life and colors and things in a tube. So hopefully you all enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. I uh, want to do or will do a more detailed video in the future of how to use the rejuvenator but as a general guideline this is how one works in a hurry so hope you all have enjoyed this video and will now be able to have your tubes fixed or prolong the life of them for your fun and enjoyment 
All right, well, if you have any questions, comments, please post them on this video or send me an email at thearcadebuffet at gmail.com or visit my site for parts and repairs and more, thearcadebuffet.com. See you soon.